festivalcircuit.com and the director of the Oregon Screams Horror Film Festival. And I'm here today with director Kristen Koch from Germany, who is the director of a film called Lips and Tips. How you doing today, Christian? I'm totally fine and um, nice to meet you. And it's a pleasure. Thank you. Well, I, I want to congratulate you because you are one of the very few films that is nominated for two awards at this festival for the Best Horror Film Award and for the Best International Director Award. Congratulations. Thank you very much. And I'm very humbled and honored to be part of uh, the uh, Oregon. That's really, really awesome. Thank you. Well, the Oregon judges are impressed. They can't wait to screen this film. They're excited about it. I want to talk about it, but I, I have a terrible habit of giving away <laughs> the end of the film. So I'm going to yeah. ask you, can you please, in your own words, can you give us the synopsis of Lips and Tips? Yeah, of course. Um, but in advance, I want to apologize for the um, native speakers. I'm That's not my native language, <laughs> so please excuse me. Um, yeah, Lips and Tips is like a thriller. It's about Melanie, a hardworking flight attendant who comes home late at night from a red-eye flight and just wants to go home and have uh, wants to calm down. But maybe someone is watching her and following her into the parking garage of the airport. Um, she gets almost attacked or maybe not and escapes the parking garage and, and goes home but maybe someone followed her and have and had sinister plans for her more i don't want to give away and uh, i hope it's a very suspenseful ride for the audience that's an excellent setup thank you um what motivated you to make this specific film at first, it was like a real life incident I I witnessed, uh, not I, I did witness, but I heard about it. And um, I want to try to incorporate it in my story and but build on it and make it more uh, like the final and stuff. And uh, a lot of things were added. And also, I wanted to make like a statement about um, the victimi victimization of uh, women in horror films, especially. And I try to avoid here cliches like always also cater to them, but also to avoid them and make a, a left turn when you think it's going that turn. Uh, that was the approach for the movie. All right, so pushing back on some some stereotypes and some, you know, the one that bothers me the most is the black guy always dies first. That's always my thing <laughs> in these horror films, right? So, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so eventually you gotta you gotta push back a little bit and I appreciate, I'm just joking, but I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, we love the cliches, but we have to work around it and not always do the same thing or maybe twist it, give it some another angle and you can be fresh again. Sure, sure. Well, you said you heard it from from maybe a true experience. Did you do you know someone in the flight industry? Um, no, it was mm -hmm. the, the actual incident was not a flight attendant that I added up so we can have like a great location, like an airport and stuff. And sure. it always fits better with the story. But mm -hmm. I uh, interviewed a lot of flight attendants uh, for the movie, for the dialogue with the specific uh, term, terms mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, for the, um, the words. It's, uh, yeah. Gotcha. So, you know, just um, how did you put together, with they're very impressed, the judges scorecards with the acting in this film. Um, how do you find your actors typically? Is it people that you know, you just look at your phone and say, I know this guy, he's perfect. Or do you do a traditional casting call? This was a really traditional casting call um, because it's an e-casting because we know we don't have a lot of money. We can like we can't uh, like uh, um, drive them here or something, then make an audition in real life. But we send out a lot of platforms uh, to where the actors can actually um, uh, um, apply to us if they like our story, if they like our setup, and then we choose. We let them play like one or two scenes over the over the uh, with some when they make they have to make a video. And we decide then, and then we meet, talk about it, and yeah. But it was classical casting. Like our main actress is from Berlin, the other one is from near Munich in Germany, and yeah, that's how it came about. Excellent. So talk to me a little bit about why you started uh, or how you started in the industry. Um, obviously, at one point in time, you were a person with good ideas, and then yeah. here you are creating content. And I don't mean writing a story in school, but I mean like. What, what motivated you to start creating content that other people could look at? Yeah, 
yeah, I was a movie fan as far back as I can remember. You see like thousands of movie, thousand movies behind me. <laughs> and um, yeah, one time I just wrote, I made my first amateur horror film, like a slasher kind of stuff. Like everybody starts the same, like in the woods somewhere with your friends. And But basically it's the same. You just get a little bit better at your craft at, uh, with every movie. And then I enrolled in the university and try to um, yeah and make a network about it to get more uh, technical uh, confidence. Yeah, then I yeah the the passion never got away from from movie making and movie watching. And um, I always wanted to not just watch. I just also wanted to create. So that goes hand in hand, I think. And yeah, and then after the university, we found a good team, mm -hmm. which we now really tight. And then we produced uh, more movies. And every time it got uh, hopefully a little bit better. <laughs> So in Germany, do you actually have um, uh, film or communication production classes at like the high school level or do you have to go, you know, and obviously the names for school are different in the U.S. than they are, yes. but but in your teens, were you already studying in school or did you have to go to a specific school to teach for film or to mm. learn film? In, in the normal German um, school system, you don't have like a school, uh, like a film stuff integrated already. You have to go afterwards. And we don't have as many, I think, as in the US. And a lot of them are very private, only like a handful of officially um, government like schools with, with mm -hmm. who teachers uh, film. And um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, afterwards. <laughs> So what do you have planned for the future after Lips and Tips? Are are you continuing uh, maybe with a sequel or do you have a whole new project? What, what are you working on? Um, we are now working on my first feature film, like we try to finance it. I already wrote the whole script and it's completely a different direction, but also a lot of tense and thriller elements to it. Um, it's called Bad Girl and I hope we get it off the ground maybe this or next year. And yeah, that's the, the, the future plans are that we make a feature. Or, and is it in the horror genre, you said? Mm, so to say. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Still working it's on it? Yeah, it's a mi mixture of drama, thriller elements, but not not supernatural this time. This time. But Lips and Tips is also not supernatural at all, like a little bit, maybe. <laughs> sure, sure. Well, you know, the tension, the production, the, the, the filmmaking, the attention to detail, um, the Oregon judges are impressed. We're excited to screen it. The Clinton Street Theater is a classic old cinema, an icon yeah. in um, in Portland. And, and we're just really excited to show your film in just a few short weeks, just three weeks from now on the 21st. So, yeah, I'm uh, really, really excited. I saw the pictures of the theater. And, you know, in Germany, I, I'm, I'm my, my favorite movies are all from the U.S. mostly. Like, I watch everything, but U.S. is my dream film country. And to see film projected, like, from my, I'm I'm born in a little little village in Germany, and it's so cool to see that in the U.S. Like my, it's a dream of mine, and it, I'm I'm really really honored to be at your uh, awesome festival. Thank you, thank you so much. Is there anything you'd like to add before we finish? Yeah, I just wanted to thank all the judges, the festival as a whole, the audience, all helpers, workers, uh, organizers. Like I know how hard it is to put something like this together, and yeah, again we are pretty humbled. I want to thank my cast and crew. Uh, without them, filmmaker is nothing, <laughs> you know that. And um, yeah, I'm really, really excited and can't wait to hear the, um, the results. And I hope that the festival turns out good for everybody. Thank you. I appreciate the kind words. We'll send you photos. You'll be missed at the screenings, but I appreciate your time today. Thank you very much. Thanks.